Wig, did you just say wig? Wig, okay. Hi, kids. Hey. Oh, um, it's been a minute, kind of. Not it really. hasn't. No one knows that it's been a minute. I know. Well, it's been a minute <laughs> for me and Caitlin. Um, <laughs> I'm revealing behind the scenes secrets, um, as I usually do. That's what this podcast is about, isn't it? Getting there's no behind the scenes secrets of drag. Um, sure. Sure. I just made that up, but sure. Uh, sure. <laughs> um. Who are we doing? Who are, are you? Oh Wait, yeah, who, who are, are we? Who are we? <laughs> um, I'm Martyr. I'm C Tepper. And this is. I already dropped out of the audio. <laughs> yeah, you sound it. fine. You sound fine. Okay. Oh, but a little bit, but it's fine. We can't um, scream anymore. Yeah, R-A-P. it was breaking the sound barrier. Um, yeah, every time. But now we're now we're chill. We're we've grown into a more calmer demeanor of our podcast. This is the the low energy low energy <laughs> we're just tired too Ooh. and we have to go out after this i know we have a full night Which ahead of we're us we're not i'm not looking forward to it <laughs> <laughs> i hope she doesn't listen to this podcast <laughs> <laughs> i know she doesn't so i don't care <laughs> um anyways we should get back to what we are doing today um who are we talking to today caitlin so our first Canadian queen, all the way from Toronto, it's Tiffany Box. Woo! Hello, hello, how are you? Hi, hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Blessing We're so you with excited. Canada. Yes. Say, say some Canadian things. I don't know what. Everyone thinks that there's Canadian like slogans and sayings and things, <laughs> but like full tea, nobody really says it. The main oh. one that, that like everyone is like, Canadian is a yeah a. a they also say we say about weird a boot, a boot. <laughs> I don't hear it but um well you're uh, in Toronto so it's a little different over yeah there, we're not like, like the <laughs> east coast or west coast where they like how's your bagged milk your ketchup potato chips and your poutine okay so <laughs> ketchup chips are fantastic yeah, number one we need milk. them more in the states oh yeah. you guys do I we need to send you some uh, please mm-hmm. <laughs> um bagged milk is like the weirdest thing that i didn't <laughs> realize was canadian only mm-hmm. <laughs> um but you know she's on an oat milk lifestyle so bagged milk doesn't really happen much oh good yeah. and poutine is the best thing yeah i used to call it poutine it's not pronounced like I think that, <laughs> that that is the way you say it but like the french canadians oh it's not poutine? french canadian call it poutine poutine um, I don't know. I have French. I don't know. Um, it's like the first episode of Canada's Drag Race where Kyle and Rita are going back and forth being like, we, we, we. Yeah. Bear that energy. I, I love know. Canada's Drag Race. FYI. Oh my God. We'll, t- we'll talk a little bit about it later. <laughs> <laughs> so how has your pandemic been? Pandemic life has been very strange, but very good, but very strange. Is um, what is happening in Canada right now, actually? So right now we are in a very strange situation where we just got allowed to like get indoor dining back up and oh, great. get you know every service industry and performance things are slowly starting back. Mm-hmm. But it was a long time before anything happened. I think we were locked down. I think it was about nine months. Um. Ontario got hit the longest out of all of Canada, of course. Um, I mean, it has like the most population, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, that's inevitable because we are bigger than most. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we just started getting back into the world of things, I want to say around June. So y'all are much we more said- advanced in concerts and dance parties in the States. Okay, but during our pandemic, like lockdown, everyone was like partying in Mar- Montreal and like there, everyone's in clubs like maskless and there was like all these drag performers and I was like, what the fuck's going on in Canada? And why am I not there right now? Yeah, we were pretty good up until like last fall and then the fall <laughs> us and they said, stay down for the count all winter long until uh, good old spring. Oof. 
yeah it's kind of like what happened with australia very that yeah except australia is like where we were last year but i feel like a lot of canadians got vaccinated unlike here (laughs) yeah i think we have i think it's like close to 80 percent or something now oh my god (laughs) that will never happen in america i'm very content (laughs) with because and we're starting i think vaccine passports there's like communication about that which low-key hope that happens yeah I want to visit I want to visit I want concerts I want to yeah have dance floor makeouts again you know hell yeah all the good things that COVID said please hold on to I know I know remember those memories (laughs) so you currently live in Toronto but where are you from originally yeah so I'm currently based in Toronto um I grew up in a small tent well it's not small small but it's not like giant city um it's called Mm -hmm. Brampton most people will not know it but it is like about a 30 minute uh drive outside of Toronto oh it's like suburbs then yeah it's very suburban lifestyle um but I went to school in Toronto and then moved here after I lived in New York for a little bit yeah we definitely I that's literally our next question (laughs) so how did you end up in New York (laughs) yeah so I went to school at uh Ryerson which is currently changing its name oh okay very happy for um (laughs) why what does that mean is it bad Ryerson um has roots to a leader who did not do the best things when it came to Indigenous people Canada they're Indigenous history is crazy very much history is coming through and they are yeah. redoing yeah. things which well, i'm very great. thankful for yeah um but yeah so i went to ryerson for theater production specializing in stage management for theater and then in our final year we had the option to either do a show here at the school or take an uh kind of like an internship so i was one of the first people at my school to actually do an internship outside of Toronto. So I went and worked on Wicked down in New York City for about six months. Work. Yeah, you know, a casual little uh, first time moving away from home and out of the big city to a giant big city. Um, So yeah, I lived in New York for about six months in 2016 working for Wicked. What did you do for Wicked? I was their stage management intern so we did all the rehearsals and props and basically running the show that went on throughout the night. The Wicked is freaking huge so that's a lot oh, yeah. of. She's yeah. a big green machine. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah and when we when I got there it was actually the first time I think since opening where they had such a big turnover there was about eight or nine new cast members that came into the show and that oh, like. Wow same time that I was joining the show so uh we were doing a full almost like full set of the show again which was really fun to see who was your alphaba I had Rachel Tucker as my alphaba okay and then I also had Carrie St. Louis as my Glinda cute Cute. I don't know either of those names but yeah cute. I know the theater (laughs) gays know that's why I asked (laughs) yeah they're fantastic (laughs) So how did you find drag? Yeah, so the beauty of New York actually uh, brought me to the world of drag. I was working, like I said, on Wicked. And then after the shows, I didn't really know anyone. So I would go to gay bars. And I actually, uh, one of my first shows that I went to was Knockout Tuesdays at Pieces. Mm -hmm. And I um, befriended Miss Cracker and Judy Darling. Oh my goodness, this was a long time ago. This is a very long time ago, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that show. Yeah, <laughs> with them, it's fantastic. With they still have that, but I think, I don't even know who currently it is. I love is that. It, is it Keisha Carr? No. No. Mm. You're thinking Barracuda. Probably. Um, anyways, continue. Yeah, continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so I befriended them, and then uh, me and Cracker became really close, and we kind of hung out and I that was my intro to like drag as a whole and then from there it was about like I saw the shows with Monet and Bob and like Aquaria when they were all still local girls oh so it was a really prime time I think to fall into the world of drag and discover it with like with New York's top drag people at that time too 
the and odds then, that we were at the same shows together are very high. <laughs> oh, very much. I was very high. <laughs> I was out at the bars every night from like, I think it was what Tuesday to Thursday, and then on Sundays too. Do you oh, know wow. of Cracker's assistant, Caitlin? I do. Yeah. yeah, Caitlin was one of my close friends when I lived in New York. Oh, then we definitely saw each other. That's yeah. really funny because <laughs> yeah. that's what I used to go to all the shows with. I love that. <laughs> yeah, and it was fun while I was there too. Uh, for one of Bob's shows, he had Scarlett Bobo come, who is ah. a Toronto-based drag queen at the time. Top three. And yeah, she got top <laughs> three. But at that time, um, I only met her a couple times, and she was like, "When you come back to Toronto, like let's reconnect." And then from there, um, that's actually how I met Juicebox and a lot of my close friends in drag that I actually have now. Yeah, so we're gonna. How did, so tell us your juice box story. How did this all happen? Yeah. So Still come to be. <laughs> for those that don't know, I'm the drag daughter of juice box from Canada's Drag Race season one. Um, we actually were friends a long time before I even thought about doing drag. Um, I think we met, we met in 2016 when I ended up moving back. And then me, Juice, and Scarlett did a bunch of uh, queer events here based in Toronto. And I was doing that intro gig to the queer scene where you do the door and you, mm. you know, those Bart long Judo's nights. knows all about that. <laughs> those long nights on the door where you start at 7 p.m. and you finish when the show is done. That's right. Can't it's wait the, till Thursday. Uh, that's that's <laughs> what Bart Judo's doing this week. <laughs> I love that. Isn't it a fun gig? Just sit in there and... Wedding. Oh. Have to Yelling deal at with, people. <laughs> have to deal with. I'm gonna call them faggots because they act like it. <laughs> oh. Very, I'm sure it's much different too now with mm-hmm. like vaccine passports and mm-hmm. the world of pandemonium. I um, luckily only have to check them until the security gets there, but um, it does give me an excuse to ask them for money because uh, <laughs> they won't like walk away. Um, yeah. People are insufferable. They just hear like door donation. They freak out. So yeah. they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> My favorite thing was flirting with people as they like, when they asked what the cover was, was to like get all cutesy and be like, oh, it's just $20. Oh, wow. If you like, did that, oh. someone would punch him in the face. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> get all cute and then. I'd be like, thanks so much and like play up with it and somehow got tipped from that. And I was like, okay, okay, this can work. If this is me out of drag, finding a way to make money doing door. Um, And then me and Juice always joked that because I knew all of the choreo to like some of her numbers when she first started, she was like, Mm -hmm. well, if you ever start drag, I'm sure you're going to end up being a box. And I was like, we'll see. Um, And then I think it was like, two or three years later I was like hey so I'm gonna start drag (laughs) (laughs) she was like took you long enough yeah um and then from there it's kind of just been history oh does she have any other kids no I am her sole child solo child only is she from a family No, so Juice is like her own little artist. She Mm. used to be a makeup artist and got in drag one day as a joke because her friends were doing something and she's like, I'm going to do it too. And then she's, it was like the most successful like moment that kind of was a pivotal moment for her. Um, But she and Scarlett were like best friends for a long time, did a bunch of gigs and kind of just took over the whole drag scene for a hot moment in Toronto. How did they decide the name Tiffany for you? Or did you decide it? So Tiffany Box was a very interesting (laughs) name for me to get to. Um, I don't know how long it takes most people to find their name, but it took me about a month. I went through so many terrible names before (laughs) I got there. And then I was at a gay bar in Toronto listening to a a queen perform and they were doing Side to Side by Nicki Minaj. (laughs) And in her rap, she says she got a box like Tiffany. And I was like, oh, Tiffany box, like the jewelry. Um, But yeah, for some reason, it took me a month. That's not that long, I feel like. Yeah, that 
That works. A lot me. of queens change their names a lot. At least here, here it's been like an epidemic of girls yeah their names every other month. But... And then I don't know who you are anymore. Yeah, that, that <laughs> happens. Yeah. <laughs> I I had some very choice names that I was like, that that shouldn't be a name. Let's but hear I was some like, rejects. Oh, like what? <laughs> yeah, let's hear some rejects. Yeah, there the original original name was going to be uh, she go down. <laughs> like from Kim Possible, but you know, she said she was slutty. I like that one, but sure. also not who I am at all. Yeah. <laughs> so that was like <laughs> the weirdest occurrence. Um, and then the second one that I was like, it's stupid, but it's funny and it's weird was a uh, tater thought. <laughs> not that. <laughs> that was like the era of when like I'm a thought came through. Yeah. Clearly, I went through a whole like sexual moment where like, <laughs> I'm the sexy person but um, <laughs> clearly you don't need to have a sexy name to be sexy yeah I like yeah. Tiffany Box I love Tiffany thanks <laughs> my favorite was when I started a lot of people are like oh do you have merch and I would tell them the directions on how to get to Tiffany and oh my Toronto. god oh my god <laughs> and it would be like a five minute conversation and they're like staring at me and I was like no you can just go buy Tiffany's I was like, I don't actually have merch. You should. Yeah. You'd have I, to do merch. merch. I'm thinking of some things in the works right now. We'll see. Uh, oh. I feel like you wrote me. about it in your story. I did. I'm yeah. getting feelers to see. I always feel like it's so weird to release merch. Why? Especially when you're not like, I don't know. I'm a very in my head kind of person. You know, I'm a cancer. So it. Uh, it happens you're in your feelings <laughs> oh, so in my feelings oh, no. and it doesn't help that I'm a Capricorn moon and a Scorpio rising so she uh that's a lot of feelings a lot of feelings don't know but how to feel the, that yeah they, but the Capricorn's gonna be like no don't have any feelings Fair <laughs> you're, like, not. you're fighting a... with yourself <laughs> yeah so with me I was always like ooh, only famous people need merch when I first started yeah. and then I was like it feels weird to put out merch now and I'm like no but you should do it and then well, the cor- sh- Capricorn says no <laughs> Capricorn should be like Capricorns are hard workers it's telling you to do it very good point well, I think it sh- might come through yeah what you should do the smart thing to do with merch is not just have merch on a website like actually buy it and then sell it at your shows yeah that's how you make the money because then you don't need to pay for shipping all of it like people will actually buy it from you then Exactly. So That's an maybe for the winter there might be Ooh. something. Ooh. Fancy. Made in Canada. Um, well, we know that you said your drag style was like, well, before you got into this current iteration of Tiffany Box was supposed to be sexy, but what would you call your drag style currently? I so this is the funniest thing for me because like I never thought I was like very specific way to nail myself Mm. um but I've definitely discovered my style is more like comedic quirky but also like such a sweetheart personality when you like see the whole thing come together so like I very much am very pretty of a drag queen but I'm also like the biggest goofball (laughs) that you will see when I start talking (laughs) and like doing stupid things um so it's definitely funny to see how it's transitioned from thinking I was like a sexy, sexy going to be a fashionista baby. moment. <laughs> and then it's like, no, like, just have fun. That's kind of where she is. If someone went to your show, what could they expect? You can expect um, a lovely mix of like early 2000s pop. Hell yeah. To like the 2010s pop kind of era because that's chef's kiss of pop music agreed, I think. agreed everything is right about it but you'll mm-hmm. also get like very comedic and like campy performances like I said um but also like the stupidest things like I've I've done shows where I've roller skated um I'm not a roller skater <laughs> but I roller skated um, I climb things. I like to do the most unforeseen things that are happening that make mm-hmm. no sense with the venue or with the number, but I'm doing it. So that's happening. 
It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. I want to go. You need to. I sh- I think we can, right? Americans can go up there or no? You guys can definitely come to Canada, I think so. We should do a day trip. <laughs> a day trip. <laughs> a Solar day trip. <laughs> A it's day super trip. close. <laughs> <laughs> this flies in for six hours. Yeah. I'm sure people do it. Oh, anyway. I, I used to do day trips to New York when it right like 2014, I think it was, like around then, I would do the 12 hour mega bus from Toronto to New York. Not 12 yeah. hours. Stay in town for 16 hours and then get on it at midnight <laughs> and come back to Toronto. Oh my God. Lordy, lordy, lordy. I um, know about that mega bus life though. It's chaotic. It's um, very chaotic. I am I not got stuck in New York. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That happens. Yep. Um, <laughs> Yeah, definitely not a bus queen. You will not see me get on the bus anytime soon. I hate going on it. Um, so, Caitlin, if you want to have a day trip to Canada, no, we would take own. we would take a plane. We yeah. take a plane. Okay, great. A carry on <laughs> kind of trip. Yeah, literally yeah. that. I'm not no twelve hour micro bus. Well, as we um, make our flight plans, um, I think we should take a little break. Okay. Um, yeah. And we'll be right back, kids. Wait, Bye. Wait, wait, wait. Wig, okay. I know, wig, I feel that already. Wig, okay. Wig, did you just say wig? Wig, okay. <laughs> I am ready for my wig. I'm sorry, so Tiffany. Don't be. <laughs> um, we are rooting for you. We are all rooting for you. I... <laughs> I really need to use that in the mix at some you point. You should. Oh my god. <laughs> I have never, but I know every single word of that whole scene. <laughs> it's so good. You but, should. So I was planning on it, but then America's got or America's Next Time Model got like all problematic during the pandemic. Eh, no and one I cares. was like, we're gonna wait six months. Yeah, oh. no. I feel like it's not problematic anymore because the no millennials still it. love it. They still quote that. I just oh, quote that too. Yeah. Very true point. Hell yeah. You um, can't take America's Next Top Model away from me. No. That was my childhood. And Honestly it became same. problematic, but it became iconic again. It was that. problematic when it aired. It's not like yeah. people didn't know there's like doing blackface wasn't problematic. In not just once. Like Every several season. times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Several no. times they just like did changed each other's race. I'm like, what is yeah. Tyra is on. But like if, if you watch the Tyra Banks show, like she had her own talk show. She did mm-hmm. way crazier shit than what Son of my oh, yeah. model. Um, my favorite is still when she invited Naomi. Uh, yeah. And was like, yes. no audience. <laughs> the most dramatic thing I in Naomi's just path. like <laughs> Naomi's like, what are you doing? Psychopath. I loved Truly. her. Truly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I loved her unhinge. Um I think Vines. She had like a Vine account where she just like make really bizarre. Tyra? Videos. Yeah, Tyra's a. Car- she's everywhere. That yeah. woman needs to be examined. <laughs> she's a media mogul. Um, life size two. Oh, life size. I haven't seen the. I second still haven't one. seen the second one. Yeah. Don't watch it. I know. Uh, yeah, I heard it's I bad. I haven't heard, heard good things. Do you know she started make trying to make a theme park? What? Called, yeah. It's named after her book series, Model Land. It's like a theme park slash totally lifestyle go. place. Yeah. Because like Sign it doesn't actually up. seem like there's rides Anything or attractions. Do, yeah. <laughs> it's just like this is a yoga store and this is a beauty salon. Sounds very Gwyneth Paltrow. Goop. Oh, they should. Yeah. Team up. I'd watch Oh my that. God. I'd watch that. You should pitch that. I'm should. Tuki. Also, the main character of her book series is called Tuki. And there's a, uh, it was like the top what? five of like one of the cycles they had to do like a commercial for the book and it's just them like walking around like a venice villa being like i'm tukey like all dramatic and like very like romance I novel. This season. um i watched the clip like at least monthly it's iconic and I'm how much tukey. do you want to get tukey came from like tooch oh Remember how she'd be like that so makes do sense. a booty tooch i wish that caught on more um, model Land is basically Harry Potter, but instead of wizards, they're models. <laughs> I would 100% go. I every hope she day. sells this to Universal. 
She it's should make show. it next to like Dollywood or something. Iconic. It I'm should be next obsessed. to the Harry Potter Wizarding World. Yes. <laughs> Get rid of the Jurassic Park. Go from one Park. world to the other one, and they're like, Get rid of the Jurassic how did Park, this Park stuff. No. And put and put the models. No. <laughs> the Not models Jurassic should be Park. in the park. Yes. Get rid of the Simpsons. I don't but, even know what the Simpsons do. You know what? Universal. Move the Simpsons into Disney. Let's be real. At this point, yeah, it's on Disney Plus. Yeah, that oh, you're, you're right. Li- Lisa Simpson is a Disney princess somehow. She is. She deserves yes. to be. Um, wow. Should we actually do this episode? <laughs> um, you know what? I'm gonna use all that in our intro, our, our little <laughs> intro um, back from break. Hi, kids. What a chaotic uh, <laughs> sentence we just had. Um, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> wow. Um, well, speaking of all things entertainment. Miss Tiffany. Hi. Um, what's it like working in the theater as your day job? Oh my god, yeah, it's so fun. Um, so in my day world, I actually work at a talent agency for film and theater and commercials. So it's really fun to like be in that world that you're like kind of producing and things like that. Um, and then with drag, you're also producing and everything. So it kind of goes hand in hand in a way of like knowing the business more and understanding what you need to understand, which also goes hand in hand with going to school and theater production because I'm essentially producing my own show every time, except it's yeah. just Tiffany rather than like a 32 theatrical person production. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Did you work on Shit's Creek? <laughs> I just have to ask because you did not. No, no, no. <laughs> I did not, unfortunately. Um, but that is a prime Canadian so television Canadian. moment. It's so good. But they pretend they're in America. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of American content. I know. To that's be everything. That's everything produced in Canada. Yeah, actually. there's <laughs> half of the movies that get filmed in Toronto here all look like New York, New York. and Chicago, and it's like. Nope. Is it? Close enough. No. Nope. See that CN Tower in the background there. Yep. No nope. fine. <laughs> no. Speaking the of only- Toronto, what is the drag scene like there? Toronto's drag scene is honestly like nowhere else in the world. And I'm sure everybody has said that, except Toronto's drag scene, we are literally workhorses. Um, we do this style of drag called marathon drag, where you as a performer are on stage solo for about 45 minutes at a time. Um, Typically drag shows that I've seen across in Vancouver, Montreal, and even New York, like your night is one song kind of thing. You come out and you're like, here's my song, Mm. showing you a full production kind of themed like that, where we come out and we do the 45 minutes type of performance of one Mm -hmm. person and then the next queen comes on and does 45 minutes and then you are back on stage doing 45 minutes so we have so it's just like numbers after each other right like yeah one person doing multiple numbers yeah so you're essentially doing anywhere from five to six numbers in one set Mm. um and then you take a little break and then you are back on stage doing another five to six numbers and keep it going and and then sometimes that's one show and then you have another show right after it so you uh get your cardio in very much yeah now. um is it like okay so you're saying in like 45 minute sets at one show how many sets would there be um anywhere from two typically it's two but there has been times where it's four sets whoa per performer uh-huh. Jesus Christ. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's so a like lot. when I say your workhorses, you are literally performing like you are like doing your own like Beyonce concert. Like you hold that stage and also in between the songs you're talking, you're keeping the audience entertained and staying there. Do y'all um, get paid well? Yeah, yeah. right. Okay. Do good. they tip up there? Because I know around the world they don't tip, but they we, might do it. In we do Canada. get tipped in Toronto. Um, okay, which that's is fantastic. What I uh-huh. We also Canadian money is a lot different than the U.S. money, so like it is. <laughs> our minimum bill that you can tip us with is like a five. Oh, oh whoa! Yeah, because we don't have singles, right? Mm-hmm. So and you don't have pennies. No, we eliminated the penny. I know. Goodness, one less change for me to hold. <laughs> um, but our singles are like 
little coins. They're called loonies, and they're like uh, they're like coins. old coins. Yeah. Um, so you can't really tip people with a coin uh, while they're performing because it looks very weird, to be honest. Uh, so most people just start tipping with fives. Um, but our bills are in increments from like five, 10, 20, 50, and 100. Dang. Love. Mm-hmm. That money. So Get that you pay. can definitely make good money. Mm-hmm. Sounds like it. As long as like you're a good performing, you know? Yeah. Is it diverse there? I, do you have like kings and stuff and AFABs? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Toronto, we have a very diverse scene, I think. Uh, we have tons of queens. We have a uh, very great size handful of kings, mm-hmm. um, as well as creatures um, and some AFAB queens. Um, a lot of them prefer to become like be known as drag queens, um, yeah. which here for there's no really need to differentiate if you're doing the same thing you know absolutely um but we have everything from even just like male entertainer performers um Mm. which are kind of like the same realm of mr continental Mm. performances um yeah there's such a big variety in toronto that like there's something kind of for everyone what what are like good places to see drag up there some great places to see drag in toronto would be Woody's, um, it's kind of more of a cabaret based style bar, um, as well as Cruise and Tango's, which is our like constant drag scene. Um, that's typically where I perform most. Yeah. Um, but we also have some fabulous places like um, the Gladstone Hotel that does a wonderful drag brunch. Glad Day does drag brunch too. Um, but we also have really fun like Latin bars that do drag shows like El Cavento Rico. So there's kind of like whatever field you like, there's a venue for you. I love that Canada has a Latin bar. That makes yeah. me excited. <laughs> and then of course, on top of that, we also have like all of the one-off events that happen. We've had like movie theater screenings where drag queens are hosting movies mm-hmm. and talking over top of it, um, as well as like pre-pandemic, there was obviously more things. Um, yeah. But it like, so many different things that happen here in Toronto. It's kind of wild. I'm going to write it all down for my day trip. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we'll impact everything. <laughs> so let's talk about where people could see you. Tell us about Playdate. <laughs> yes. Um, so during the pandemic, I created this socially distanced drag branch in Toronto. It's called Playdate. Um, it is, I think, Toronto's largest venue for a drag brunch um it fits about 80 tables um but over the size wow 80 80 and each table is um currently about eight feet apart from each other whoa how big it's huge (laughs) and it's kind of like a giant concrete football field but it's beautiful i'm gonna show y'all a photo and i'll describe it for listeners i feel like i've seen stories of you yeah so <laughs> it's, it's in the heart of toronto and it's oh, like wow. this giant Whoa. multicolored graffitied <gasps> patio that is so cool yeah and it's um done by this mural artist named claudestinos and it's fantastic their picnic tables are incorporated into the mural so it all from a bird's eye view kind of looks like a whole visual story yeah oh, wow. so we do play date uh, once a month right now um, some months have multiple ones but it's mm-hmm. been a once a month thing that came back as of this summer which was lovely because last year we got to do one and then we were set up for our second one and the lockdown uh yeah. said stay at home so she got a little nine month hiatus and then came mm-hmm. back and we're currently on our I think seventh or eighth event with wow in three months that's crazy oh, yeah yeah that's thank huge. you yeah and we also added some new uh little events this year to it so rather than just having a drag brunch we also incorporated uh outdoor movie screening of uh spice world yes it was hosted oh my by God. two drag queens and you were told to dress up and enjoy the campy movie of spice world oh i wish i knew I right <laughs> so good um, we have another one of those coming up in October, but we also have done like 
cool things like a full drag concert to Lady Gaga's Chromatica. So it was like a full album party that never actually got to experience because of the I know. Are you yeah. you should do the remix one now? <laughs> I some people have asked, and I think that might be something we might try to work out. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. You saw the first show. Now you have to see the second show. Right. You gotta see the remix. Honestly. Exactly. It keeps I'm the story going. I'm into it. As long as we get to visit Chromatica, I'm here for it. Me too. Right? <laughs> the best thing too about it is we did it on the anniversary of when the Toronto sh- tour stop was supposed to be. So Oh wow. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. We were like, the concert didn't happen, but our concert's happening tonight. So. Oh, Hell yeah. Rip. I mean, she's still coming, apparently. Next oh, year, she kids. Is. Next oh, year. Yeah. No. I'm so excited for the tour. I want to see her in Vegas. Um, I'm h- excited for House of Gucci, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Father, son, and House of Gucci. House of Gucci. Um, so with Playdate, you have extremely diverse casting. What yes. is the spotlight performer portion? Yeah, so this year with Playdate, um, we have a show. So every play date has about seven to nine performers. Um, oh, wow. And that includes our new edition this year of the spotlight performer. So our spotlight performer was a thing we set up where a lot of new performers can apply to or submit to perform. Um, with Toronto, we do have a large open stage scene where new performers can go out and try new numbers for kind of tip spot moments Mm -hmm. um but with the pandemic they weren't really able to do that and I found a lot of people were only really discovering drag through the digital era Mm -hmm. which is like fantastic Mm -hmm. but the digital era is also so different than performing in person so yeah when we came back and bars necessarily weren't opening the open stages yet because they were still trying to figure out how indoor performances was happening, I wanted to make sure that new performers had a spot to perform. Um, And with the size of the venue, it's also a very rare occurrence that as a new performer, you'll be performing for an audience of 300 people or more. That's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So they, it's a paid spot. So they get to earn a booking fee. They get paid too? Wow. They get a booking fee. Wow. They get to do one number of whatever they want, whatever shows their drag the best. So if that's a mix, if that's a solo set song, that's just from a song. Um, there's literally no rules except for like having fun and show your best self. Love. Yeah. Marjorie should do it. <laughs> yeah. in our day trip to Canada, let me <laughs> you do your tip spot, girl. Amazing. <laughs> get paid a can- the conversion rate though you might be a little bit disappointed oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll lose some money. <laughs> i might have to charge double unfortunately y'all were above <laughs> us for a hot while <laughs> but yeah there's been um every single play date there's been like one spotlight performer but we've also had ones where there's multiple ones too so it adds a nice diversity of like different talent and things you're not really like prone to seeing normally mm-hmm. That's so important. It's it's great that you're doing that. Thank you. Yeah, I think fostering new drag, even just by like providing space for performers, helps a lot. Also, uh, watch them get on dra- Canada's Drag Race. <laughs> it could like, happen in like a year. <laughs> yeah, season three, get them on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'll be iconic. <laughs> so you're a corporate queen. You've done Toronto Zoo, Pride Toronto, phone companies, insurance companies. Getting that coin. <laughs> yes. How did has... that all happen? <laughs> um, it's I, it's been very wild. So I've only been doing drag for about three years. Mm-hmm. Um, and my first like corporate, I think, was in 2019. So that is maybe a year after I started. Um, and my first one was for our Pride Parade. I was on the Facebook float, um, which was really fun and Mm -hmm. diffed me because I was like a new baby queen being like, I am in the parade. What? Well, the so I actually wanted to, I didn't even put this in the um, outline, but I wanted to talk about Toronto Pride because it is huge. Whenever I see videos, it's like, it's like New York Pride. It's like Toronto Pride is the one. (laughs) Like New York Pride is 
the biggest I think. obviously yeah you know but besides, like i like, think it's besides um australia like but. australia and life ball and like things like that yeah but toronto pride i think is so cool we have like we have our dyke parade we have the pride parade we have our trans march but we also have such great entertainment that like you I get think all the big names there's usually about nine to ten stages too oh, so wow. there's always something happening and it lasts for about two weeks here which what? is like <laughs> our big thing is like two weeks but we celebrate all month long yeah um but we get all the big names we've had like bianca del rio lady bunny um pearl like aja pablo vatar pablo. maya like so many cool people have come to pride toronto and just like are so great so i'm really excited for when that can come back yeah i always see videos it looks so much fun <laughs> yeah and it's in like our young dundas square which is like toronto's version of Times square mm. Um, so it's dead smack in the center of the city and there's like a giant stage there that you perform on as a as a queen um, or drag performer actually but your audience there I think is like close to 3,000 people standing plus you have like all the traffic that comes on the street and everything so oh wow they don't shut the streets (laughs) no like the main street is shut down for the parade but like yeah all the surrounding streets are still going so you're like hustle yeah that's crazy jesus yeah so in the first my first like pride parade was uh me on the facebook float riding through there and that was really cool and then through there i've been on like pride toronto's campaign um i did like a mobile company but also do the toronto zoo every single year so i get what is that so it's our like zoo of like it's like an actual city. zoo it's yeah. an actual <laughs> zoo um but we started we messaged them I think about three years ago pitching them an idea to like have a pride celebration and then since then we throw the pride parade events at uh Toronto Zoo every year so I've like gotten to feed lions and tigers ah. um and polar bears and gotten to learn so much about animals that I didn't think would be part of my drag at all but (laughs) I know so much about like rehabilitation and habitats and enrichments for these animals um while also just like sharing the like values of pride with like communities that wouldn't necessarily be the LGBT based community I want to go to that yeah, it's so <laughs> that's so oh, cool. Fun. I love it so much. Queens uh, and animals. Queens and animals. <laughs> they go Those, hand in hand. Totally. Aren't you like not supposed to like work with children, animals, or drag queens? Isn't that the saying? <laughs> I think so. I think so. But that's you know, okay. let's break all the rules. <laughs> oh, yeah, who needs rules? <laughs> go off. Put them all in one. Children, um, animals, and drag queens. Well, speaking of working with animals, uh, <laughs> <Yikes>. <laughs> I know what a transition. <laughs> well, um, you mentioned that um, you get to book a lot of local talent in the Toronto scene. You get to see a lot of performers um, at Toronto Pride. Um, you have a lovely drag mother, uh, Juice Box. But what are some of your favorite? Canadian um drag performers that we should keep an eye on yes oh my god so I love like Canadian talent we're Mm -hmm. so diverse I think in terms of like skill set not even just like how you present but like each performer is so different Mm -hmm. um so some of my favorites I'll do some Toronto and then some like cross country yeah um so from Toronto, some of my favorites are Jada Shada Hudson. She is the turn-up sensation of Toronto. Um, nobody performs <laughs> like Jada. You can, like, hold a show, like, for four hours, and you're like, holy shit, she is Whoa. amazing. Um, on top of that, there's Carlotta Carlisle. I absolutely love her. She is, like, a glamour Broadway queen, um, but the most stunning and the kindest person. Mm-hmm. as well as Tash Riot. She is the queen of lesbians. She <laughs> holds a show like no one else and is such a powerhouse performer. Um, she's very much a superstar in my eyes. 
Um, and then also um, the ugly one is one of my favorites. And Wait, that's her name? <laughs> their name is the ugly one. I was like, oh, damn, who's the ugly one? My God. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because everyone looks when I'm like, give it up for the ugly one. People are like, you can't say what? That. You can't call her. <laughs> Don't say that they're ugly. And I was I like, no, with- that's, that's their name. <laughs> um, but the ugly one is really fucking cool. They've performed for like Lady Gaga oh, um, wow. and done some really great things. There are is so captivating i find it's really amazing to see ah with Whoa. the mustache yeah they have, have look them up. mustache but also like such high concept art and like visuals um oh and another person i love is steak um <laughs> i've heard yeah. of steak you've heard of steak <laughs> yes oh my god yeah steak is such a great performer she is so campy so silly but like the best dancer and the kindest soul so those are like my toronto staples of who i love the most maybe not the most but like very key people that everyone i think should get into um canada wise one of my number ones would have to be kendall gender she is a vancouver based queen yeah kendall is the kindest soul um She is a beautiful, beautiful performer, as well as, like, drag artist, um, as well as, and also, wow, she, if you haven't seen it, you need to go see it. She has this performance she did, I think, pre-pandemic, and it's called um, Cancella, I believe. It is (laughs) Baychella's, she recreated the Baychella's performance with a Mm -hmm. full marching band on stage oh whoa and like everything to the detail and it is fantastic so please watch that um oh she's stunning i'm just looking up everyone you're talking you should (laughs) she is beautiful um and then also from vancouver there is the girlfriend experience no one holds my attention like the girlfriend experience to be honest um watching her perform on stage is so captivating she will always perform with a fan (laughs) and it serves every single second of the number um so i'm watching it now yeah it's beautiful come on fan like the energy the moments like she is the moment the girlfriend experience is the moment um so those are some of my vancouver faves and then in montreal um, yeah, they have, my like, fr- a whole, like, their own thing going on. Over yeah, there. every drag scene in Canada is very different, I find. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, some of my faves in Montreal are definitely, uh, obviously, Kiara from Canada's Drag Race. She is yes. such Kiki a to work Kai with. Kai. But none of these queens are my type. And that's, that is always in my head at all times. The best. <laughs> the best. Um, she is such a sweetheart and such a great performer that like you just want to keep watching and keep it going because it is so good (laughs) um as well as Pythia Pythia is a very fun and very conceptualized um, drag performer in Montreal their art kind of reminds me of Sasha Bluers to Mm -hmm. like the level of detail they put in Mm -hmm. and they do everything themselves too oh wow for the most part so it's very like rewarding as an audience member to watch and then to learn that and you're like wow the level of detail that they put into their craft is like next level love yeah so um, those are like my list. faves that's yeah. a good list um i think we should take another break and follow these beauties yes and we'll be right back with our usual shit show of our last question <laughs> hey 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 <laughs> We'll be right back, kids. Bye. Bye. Wig, okay. I know, wig. I feel that already. Wig, okay. Wig, did you just say wig? Wig, okay. I am ready for my wig to go flying. I guess we're good. Shall we go into the last part? 
Yeah, I de- I think we should definitely talk about just Canada's Drag Race too in general. Okay. There's no one else who watches it, but y'all probably. So. <laughs> I think everyone watched it to be honest. Yeah, I think that was the that season came out like it came in out the at the heart of the pandemic. Yeah, it came out at the right time because um there weren't like five thousand versions of Drag Race at that point yet. Like right now. <laughs> like right now. Like I tried to keep. I'm trying to keep up with Holland right now, and I'm just failing. It's just I, too much. I haven't even watched season one of Holland because it was. It's I not the same stuff. Party. It's I, not the best. Their I, runways are really good, though. I have mm. zero interest in most international versions. After the shit show that was Australia, I'm like, do I even want to watch? Espana more? was good. I heard Espana looked beautiful. It was really good. I just haven't had the brain capacity to like take oh, I know. It's just new drag much. race. It's to be too honest. much right now. Mm-hmm. Like All Star Six right now, I'm like, okay, I can do this because I know them. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. It's it, well, it's it ends this week. It's already it's, over by the time this airs. <laughs> yeah. Um, Perfect. Ripped, ripped to my week or weekly job, my weekly income. Oh well. Me too. Yeah. Well, don't worry. I'm sure there's gonna be another know, drag race I'll, that airs in three I'll, weeks time. I'll wait. I'll wait like a day. They're gonna be announced like. International. I thought All-Stars. Italy was supposed to be out already. I guess not. I'm I think Italy's coming soon. Yeah, I don't know. Because they're supposed to be what season fourteen soon. Mm. Are they going to do that this year? No, that'll be next year. Yeah, oh, right. that'll be January. What well, is it? Canada coming back this year? I'm so confused. Yeah, Canada's that. supposed to come back this fall winter. I think <laughs> they said 2021. So that's the only season left. Oh God. <laughs> I'm just so tired. Although well, Canada's Drag Race, like, I don't know, it was one of my favorite seasons. Me too. I feel like the Canadian humor was like another level. Cause, like, with American challenges, I feel like the humor, they really force it and it's just never funny. But Canadian humor, like, really shined through for me. Mm-hmm. Especially That's like Jimbo and stuff. Oh, I love Jimbo. <laughs> me too. Jimbo was robbed, but I love Priyanka. So <laughs> I also maybe maybe I'll save this for when we talk. But I also find we, like, I, we're we're probably gonna use this, so we could great. Just talk. <laughs> yeah, no. I also feel like with the Canadian season, it like didn't. A lot of the contestants didn't really necessarily force the branding mm. and the awareness that I find a lot of the contestants on the U.S. franchise do, mm. um, because we're so used to like what the franchise is and how it works and how the formula is. That's true. Where they come through and they're like, hi, this is my brand. This is what I do. This is my my color. This is my catchphrase. I only wear these. Yeah. Whereas I found Canada, all the girls just came in being like, I'm ready to prove myself and have fun and just take this adventure for what it is, which I think made the season so good. Because there was so much heart to it. Yeah, it definitely seemed less produced. Yeah. In, in that way, with the contestants at least. Which was also, I found, what Drag Race UK season two was I agree. Like. I agree. Like, everyone was just there for a good time showing themselves at the best capacity they can. Yeah. Can't, say the, can't wait for the shit show that is going to be cycle three of uh, Drag Race UK. Anyways, Why? Is there, is there some tea? Welcome wait. back, kids. I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> Oh, oh well. Um, I mean, I know about everyone getting canceled. Uh, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome back, kids. We're doing our last little segment, our little cool down of interview questions, where we ask the real hard hitting shit. Dun, dun, dun. Really. Did you know Priyanka? Yeah, yeah. Work. Love that. I did I know love Priyanka. Her. Yeah, <laughs> I know Priyanka. She's from, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> Priyanka actually performed at my. <laughs> birthday party in my living room uh, yeah this is i think 2018 Aww. or something uh yeah priyanka was the only drag queen that's ever performed in my house besides me <laughs> pre-pandemic Aww. that's, that's incredible actually, that's really cute yeah i well, like priyanka speaking of the beast of drag race um do you see yourself uh going on do i go on? i definitely think everyone my rule with drag race is I think everyone should apply in general, because I think the more you put yourself out there, the more, you know, yourself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, And you're taking those chances to show 
a bunch of people that have never seen your drag who you are. Um, so I definitely think it's something I will apply for in the future. Um, but it's definitely not something that I'm like making the sole reason of why I do drag. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> no, Cause I know there's so many Queens that like start drag and because of drag race that are like, I'm going to be on drag race. And that's the narrative that their drag brings, but that is definitely not the pushing drive behind my drag. I think there's mm-hmm. so much to drag that you can do as an artist that doesn't necessarily need to solely base off of a TV show. TV show. I will say though, I was expecting you to disappear and go on vacation. And I guess that didn't happen. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I did disappear. <laughs> I broke my leg and tripped and my phone died. I was really I was like, okay, I know she's gonna be gone very soon <laughs> surprise you know that i uh i actually didn't audition for season two. Oh, i'm shocked i yeah. really thought you could totally get on season two thank no you no problem i appreciate that <laughs> um yeah no i think like i i did the original very small video uh-huh. you know what i mean of what i think you should do mm-hmm. um but then i just kind of realized like i I'm ready for more self-discovery before okay, going for it. I know? think whenever you decide you want to be on, they're going to cast you. No problem. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, besides Drag Race, um, what other future projects um, are upcoming that you want to tease to the audience? Give yeah. a little plug to us. So right now, um, the main thing that I am working on with my drag is Playdate. Um, So we have our anniversary show coming up in September, but we will be running events all the way until October 31st in our beautiful venue. Um, And then I'm probably going to take a little hiatus, Um, not going on a trip or anywhere, (laughs) take a little hiatus from the branches to kind of reformat to see where I want to shift Playdate and create new spaces, new events to make sure that there's always something for someone in the community. Are they doing anything indoor right now? We have indoor performances at bars okay. and things, um, okay. but we're not allowed to dance. We are currently in the movie Footloose. Dancing is illegal. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you come into a venue, you are sitting down at a table, Yeah. but you, uh, you're not allowed to get up and dance. Mm-hmm. So, uh, We'll see what the regulations change and allow us to get to, but uh, definitely hoping to throw like a queer dance party in the future. Oh, that'd be nice. And oh, give everyone cute. the things we've been missing for like two years. Oh yeah. my God, tell me that. Fingers <laughs> yeah. crossed. It Hopefully happens. it's not five. Sooner than later. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, if you y'all are 80% vaccinated, I mean, I feel like things are going to open up pretty quick over there. I would love for that to happen. Yeah. Um, Miss Delta needs to stop showing her ugly little head. Yeah. I know, and I heard that there's an offspring of Lambda or yeah, Lambda. <laughs> I'm like, girl, please stop producing. Let's uh, blame America on that one, probably. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I blame America with most of our problems. most of it. Yeah, Delta too. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. but the moral of the story is, get vaccinated. Thanks. That's kids. right. If you are not vaccinated and you want to. You should get it. And even if you don't want it, you should get it. I'm going to put one of my friends on blast. Yeah, I know. I, see, I know. We're thinking the same thing right now. <laughs> She's probably going to be listening to this podcast because I know she listens she, to she it. She does she listen sews, to us. When she sews, <laughs> this bitch <laughs> took how many months to get vaccinated? She's not an anti vaxxer. She just She's was too lazy. She was too lazy, lazy to do it. Um, but so, kids, if you're fucking lazy to get the vaccination, which yeah. what? <laughs> if what? you want to so see dumb. Lady Gaga tour and you want to have a dance floor makeout yeah. and you want to travel and see all your favorite dolls perform, get vaccinated. Get the, get the vaccine. Oh also, now they give you money. You get oh, paid. Yeah, does, they get the does. vaccine. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're desperate to give people the vaccine. Yeah, it's that bad here. Yeah, I wish I got paid. Same. Yeah, me too. <laughs> they they didn't it, they didn't do that until you know. 
I got my second shot and I was like, can you also give me a third one? Which one did I, you get? Oh, I'm a Pfizer doll. Yeah. Pfizer faggot. We all, all three Pfizer here. Oh, Pfizer fam. Look at us. Did Love. they have AstraZeneca in Canada? I feel like they did. We right? did. Yeah. yeah. We had AstraZeneca, Moderna, and Pfizer. But not that Johnson Johnson. No, no Johnson single shots all. for us. No. Honestly, for the best. Yeah, you're better <laughs> off. <laughs> Fair. Okay, let's, okay, I'll go to the next question. Yeah. So what is the best advice you've been given about drag, doing drag, in drag? Ooh, I love this question. <laughs> um, so there's a couple of advice. I think there's three or four that I stand by that constantly remind me for my own drag, but also things that I've been told that I love to pass down to other people. Um, so those are to stay humble because I think that's very important because if you get too in your head, you are not focusing on the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Um, so stay humble. Your sister's, your sister's successes are not your failures. So whatever, I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Your sister's successes are not your failures um that I think is something that all drag artists and every person I think can hold true to because we very much fall into the comparative mindset and I think we're all in our own different lanes so that is something very important and one of the other advices that I love the most is if you're not ready to lose you're not ready to win and that's like more like pageantry competition based but Mm -hmm. I think also just a good mindset to keep in mind when you do anything that you are putting yourself forward and presenting to it, whether it is a TV show or a bar competition or continental, like if you aren't ready to lose, like you're not ready to win. So true. That is good advice. All of it. Love, love a good pageant answer. (laughs) Great. <laughs> and I've never been in a pageant. You're getting full marks. Our pageants, <laughs> our pageants, big in Canada. I mean, obviously, we know about Brooklyn. But... Yeah, we actually just had the resurface of Miss Canada Continental. Uh, oh wow! For the first time in 2019, um, but after I think it was like a five or six hi- year hiatus. Oh wow! Um, so Brooke actually helped bring Miss Canada Continental back to the scene. And our winner, Miss Mona Moore, is currently heading off to Chicago to compete in wow. this year's Continental. Amazing. Great. Yeah. yeah. So sending her all the good juju. Yes. Love. It's um, so hard. <laughs> it is. It's hard being drag. It's <laughs> hard being beautiful. Yeah. And having to compete about it. <laughs> Especially with like. 30 other beautiful people beautiful people yeah. who are You're very like, okay. talented like those talent portions are no joke no I can watch they're not <laughs> I watch literally continental videos like no tomorrow that is my favorite thing to watch yeah it's incredible I'm assuming you've listened to page pod no no okay okay good yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry my face is just like so excited with that i was like, yes, yes 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 um that was a good podcast series by uh, willem in alaska they don't need a plug but i'm giving it to them oh i didn't even hear about that one um i mean i know that i know that they do a podcast obviously. yeah but um mm-hmm. it's very good um i believe it is my favorite question my famous yes. question. your famous question my favorite qu- question um Tiff, can I call you Tiff? I'm calling. You can Tiff. call me Tiff. You can call me whatever you want. <laughs> um, can you give us something juicy, something riveting, something dramatic that has happened in nightlife that you have witnessed, that you have heard about, something legendary that you cannot forget, and you tell any bitch that asks about it? Give us something good. Hmm, something juicy, legendary. That has happened. Never been done before. Never club. been done before. Never been Another seen. Another club. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, I think the most recent one that I can think of is there was this uh, performance that happened a couple of weeks back. 
And so a couple of weeks back, we're also talking about like plexiglass surrounding the stage, Mm -hmm. full COVID safety precautions, like velvet rope in front of the stage, plus glass shields, like, Mm. you know, all the nine yards of social distancing. (laughs) Um, This performer is on stage and was just so in the zone that they somehow broke through the glass and went straight through the audience. Oh my God. Um, So the stage is also about seven to eight feet from where the audience is and like burst through the seams of the plexiglass and landed, spun around people and then like got up and ran through the audience and then got back on stage and continued the number. What? So like full icon for finishing your number and going yeah. off, but also like, Myself and two of the other hosts were like standing there and our mouths just dropped. Were they bleeding? Nope. Nope. Oh. Nothing nothing happened. Okay. But they um somehow burst through plexiglass, which is that's really hard very to strong do. plastic that is hanging from the ceiling. So that um that's definitely something that is chaotic and crazy that's recent. You need to watch um, out for that bitch. That's definitely yeah, like an power. only in a <laughs> pandemic type of situation with that ever. <laughs> very that. Very that energy. Um, although I'm very known for taking a tumble myself. Mm-hmm. I have fallen through tables. I have fallen <laughs> off of um, a lot of things. I recently broke a heel while performing, continued performing climbed a 15 foot tower jumped down fell backwards did a back somersault and then got up and continued the song ow (laughs) yeah little chaotic got a lot of bruises from that but um like i said you never know what's gonna happen with the tiffany box performance (laughs) i'm sure the audience is living they probably gave you way more fives it's it's everything the full (laughs) clip is actually on my uh instagram so Oh. You, can see Tiffany take a, you can see Tiffany take a tumble. Um, we're Very definitely going to promote that. Um, we're going to put it in our... Oh, yeah, I know. Um, I was like, I should bio. find this. It's I'll one. put it when we promote the show. <laughs> okay. So our last question is, where do you want to take your drag in the future? Yeah. Um, some places I would love to take my drag in the future is I would... I think I actually really want to compete in... Miss Canada Continental one year or do a like pageantry kind of style like that because I think that is like high drag and high excellence of drag so I'd Mm -hmm. love to see how Tiffany performs in high caliber Um, but I would also love to take my drag obviously cross country different countries maybe worldwide you know do a little gig in London one day maybe um, or Australia, that would be really fun. But I think the main drive behind what I want to do in the future is also to be able to help my community and others with drag. Um, give back is the main thing. And also like creating spaces for people that may not necessarily have them or don't feel seen in them. That there is always a place for someone to belong and find that escape that you need with drag because that's what drag really taught me back in 2016 so that's something that I hold true to Tiffany oh Canadians are so nice well like New Yorkers are like like, give me the hundred (laughs) dollars I want to get rich bitch yeah Yeah, um, that was so sweet uh cute (laughs) sweet it was sweet girl it was sweet (laughs) sweet has to stay in the podcast yeah no oh it is That'll be the first word that we use. Yeah, I probably will. um, Please do. (laughs) Um, That was queet. Um, Well, thank you so much for coming on our show. Um, Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure getting to talk to you and getting to know you. Your Uh, first Canadian princess. Uh, Yes, our first Canadian princess. I'm taking your Canadian passport. Yes. Um, Please plug all your socials for the kids to follow you. Yes, of course. You can find me on Instagram at Tiffany, T-I-F-F-A-N-Y dot B-O-X-X with two X's because I am a whore. (laughs) Just kidding. Um, It's just the last name. (laughs) But you can also find me on Twitter at Tiffany box underscore yeah tiffany box with two x and underscore love 
Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, babe. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for having me, Angels. Yay. Um, I was Mart here. I was C. Tepper. And this was Canadian Ooh. version of wigging out. I wish, I wish there was a funny way to say, uh, oh, wigging out. Duh. Oh my God. Duh. Not wigging oh, out. Not why, wigging did, out. Did, why did that take me so long to realize? Wigging <laughs> out. Okay. I'm, eh? with, I'm ending the podcast. Goodbye, kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Very cute. I'm C. Tepper. You can follow me on Instagram at C-T-E-P-P-E-R and read my book, The State of Drag, where I interviewed 175 drag queens from around the world. All proceeds go to charity on Amazon.com. Ooh, I love that. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Drag the Martyr. And if you have any thoughts, comments, dick pics, send them to DragTheMartyr at gmail.com. Listen, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Pandora. And catch up with past episodes on Work.com. That's W-E-R-R-R-K.com. Artwork for Wigging Out was provided by Glitter Baby Online. That's Glitter Baby Online. Thank you.